This video deals with Wednesday's lesson, um, which discusses representative and random sampling. Once again, after you view this video, there will be a quizzes assignment that you would need to complete. I apologize, but there were no, like I said, whodunits or anything, as I mentioned in yesterday, which was Tuesday's video on populations and sampling. What you see popping up now on your screen is just a reminder, there is a Imagine Math competition school-wide this week, so really try to invest some time in Imagine Math particularly if you are kind of going through the lessons pretty quickly. Um, go for that. Try to be at the top. And try to be at the top of the whole school. That will be a pretty cool feeling. Um, now, with this lesson, we are actually going to start straight um, with a video. How can you use a sample to gather data about a large population? Think about this question during the lesson. The 2,468 registered voters in Morganstown are voting on whether to build a new stadium. Morgan and her friends want the town to vote in favor of the stadium. How can they determine how the voters will vote before the day of the vote? How can you represent this problem situation using math? So, this is a unique situation in the sense that the population is very high, right? It's almost, if I look up here, it's almost 2,500. So what Morgan and her friends cannot really do is go around and ask everybody. They can't ask the entire population. So what they would need to do here is they would ultimately need to create um, some kind of sample um, that is smaller than the population. And the goal of that is to use that sample to make predictions about the overall population. Now, what we're going to discuss today is what makes a quality sample. Morgan and her friends could ask every registered voter, or the entire population of voters in town, how they plan to vote. Is it reasonable for Morgan and her friends to survey every voter? Select your answer. As I literally just mentioned, they could do this, but it's not reasonable. They probably couldn't go around to that many people. Surveying thousands of people would take a very long time. Morgan and her friends would not be able to survey the entire population of voters. Morgan and her friends could ask a subset or a sample of the registered voters how they plan to vote. Surveying a sample of voters doesn't take as long and is more reasonable to do. Morgan and her friends would be able to ask 100 or 200 people. When you're choosing a sample, why is it important for you to define the population as clearly as possible? For this, you want your sample to represent the population, okay? Um, basically, with a sample, what you're doing is you're reducing the size of the population down to a small sample so you can estimate for the rest of the population. So if you do not define the population clearly, you're going to end up in a situation where your sample doesn't align with your population. Therefore, the predictions you make are going to be off-based and inaccurate because they're not rooted in, in the population that you're trying to study. It is not usually possible to study every member of a population. But if you know information about the members of the population, you can define and generate a representative sample. Now, we're going to use a slider here, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, um, to see different samples for this population. So this represents the entire almost 2,500 voters, okay? Clearly there's not 2,500 people here, but each person may represent, let's say, 100 people. Now, I can move it here. So Morgan and her friends could ask a small sample, all right? It wouldn't take very long to survey 20 people, right? But having a sample size that small may not produce very useful data. Remember, just like probability, the more you do, the more accurate you get. Now, let's move this over. Not that far, right here. Morgan and friends could ask a convenient sample. What that means is people who can easily be reached. Um, and it is easier to survey those people, but just surveying for convenience 
may create a sample that is not representative of the population. So you don't want to do a small group and you don't want to do simply what's convenient. Now, what Morgan and her friends want to do in order to conduct and gather data that's meaningful is they want to do a random simple sample or a sample of a random subset of registered voters. The reason it wants to be random is you want to make sure you get a representative, um, a representative sample. And usually by randomizing um, the people you pick to survey, you're going to end up with a representative sample. So in this case, this sample of just random voters is most likely to provide information about the entire population. Remember, your goal is to gather a little bit of information from a smaller sample to make accurate predictions about the entire population. Now you know how a sample can represent an entire population. We're going to break this down and make sure we are clear on what represents a representative random sample. So a representative sample accurately reflects the characteristics of the population you are trying to study. So once again, you're taking a, the whole population, you're scaling it down to something that's more manageable, but that sample you decide should be representative of the entire population. So, for instance, take this as our population. This sample down here accurately represents our population. Um, it has a similar percent. In fact, this is a very good representative sample because it's the same percent of males and the same percent of females. So we scaled it down, but we kept the same representation, the same kind of ratio of females to males here. Now, keep in mind, the only um, gender is not the only uh, factor that plays in a role in creating a representative sample, right? Age could be a factor, income level, race, right? A true representative sample should match more than just the, the gender situation. Now, I want you guys to make sure you write this down. I want you to get these vocabulary words down. We just talked about representative sample, which is just a smaller group that reflects the characteristics of an entire population. Now, often to get a representative sample, you do what's called random sampling. In a random sample, and you see dice here, which is a form of random sampling, you need to make sure each member has an equal chance of being selected. Random sampling usually will lead to representative sampling. Now, that's not always true, because if you randomize something right in it, and you're trying to, let's say, get that equal split of males and females, you could get, like, females every time, and then that new sample isn't representative anymore, right? But randomizing generally leads to a fairly representative sample. Now, I want to uh, kind of draw our attention back to what we discussed yesterday, which social me media network do 7th grade students at Commodore prefer? The, this is a possible representative random sampling. We can select five students randomly. Maybe we put names in a hat. Maybe we do the popsicle draw. Maybe we put the names randomly into like a class graph or something and pick somebody. But maybe we select five students from each section. Okay, randomly. Now, it's obvious why that's random, because it's random, but it's also representative because each section, so 701, 702, 703, is pretty balanced. Like, it's a mixture of males, females, um, different ability levels and different subjects. It's a big mixture, right? Some of you may have pets at home, some of you may not, right? Like, it, it's, a, it's a huge mixture. Um, and each section generally has a similar ratio, for instance, of boys to girls, if we're talking about, you know, comparing, comparing genders there. So that's something we could do. We would have a sample size of 15 individuals that we would be able to survey and push that out to the nearly 100 kids in seventh grade. Now, we're going to look at how, and make sure you, you had some notes on that slide, okay? Now we're going to look like at how you generate a random sample. So, say we have this, okay? We're going to collect a random sample. And I'm going to kind of, we're going to go to the same question, but we're going to look at it a different way. 
In the previous slide, well, two slides ago, we discussed picking five students from each section. But say we wanted to create a larger, um, a larger sample. What we can do is we can select five students randomly from each advisor. That would give a bigger sample size because there's more advisories than there are class sections. But we are still randomly picking. There's still going to be some kind of balance between genders because you have male and female advisors and we're taking five random from each advisory. So there's generally going to be a balance there, a, a representation, an accurate representation of the entire grade through that random sampling. Now, how can we do this? We may want to use an online random generator to pick five different students. As I mentioned, when we used ClassCraft last year and I picked random students, it, it just randomized it. Popsicle sticks, right? A lot of online things you can just type in, whether it's numbers or names, and it will pick one randomly. Um, we can also do it like names in a hat, pull out five names without looking. Now, then you would get, you basically would ask right? Th those people who make up the sample size, and they would answer the survey. And we would have four here who like Facebook the best, 15 Instagram, 23 Snapchat, two Twitter, and six up some other, um, assuming other was an option there in this survey. And then we would basically use this smaller sample and scale it out to estimate for the entire population. So I want you to Think basically here, what of these four major ones here, we're not going to focus on the other for now, for instance, do you think is the most popular amongst the entire seventh grade based on the data we, we gathered? And that would have to be based on what we have, right, Snapchat here. Now, that it may not be true, right, Instagram may catch up, but based on our random representative surveying, you can make the prediction or the inference, which we'll discuss tomorrow, that Snapchat is the most popular, right? With Instagram coming in second and Facebook and Twitter falling uh, pretty far behind. So representative random samples. Random. Everyone has to have a chance of getting picked. Um, you can use a number generator, a name generator. You can roll a die. You can pick names out of a hat. Um, you can do a lot of random things, but random means everyone has an equal shot, and it's random, right? Representative means, I'm going to go back here, your sample should match the characteristics of the entire population, all right? If you have, say, a 50-50 split of boys and girls in a survey, and then you go, or, or in a population, excuse me, and you create a sample that's 95% girls and 5% boys, that's not going to give you very good data. If, you know, it works similar with, with race, right? Like, say you have a situation where you your population consists of, you know, 30% black and 70% white. If your sample is 90% black and 10% white, that's not representative. You want your sample to have similar characteristics as close as possible to the entire population in order to get accurate data. All right. Now, we are on Wednesday. Um, you are going to take another quizzes. It is on representative and random sampling, which we discussed throughout this video. Um, there will also be a few questions about population and sampling that came from uh, the last video, but you should be pretty, pretty good with that, assuming you're doing the lessons in chronological order. As always, if you need help, please do reach out.